Hey, good morning. Have you ever had areas of your life where you made decisions for yourself, but every time you went to execute that decision, you did something different other than what you decided? Or you continued to make decisions based on old, outdated information, and it continued to ruin your profession, your career track, your relationships, your most treasured relationships. Well, I have the clue. We're going to get freed today. This is Crystal Roy with the Kingdom Exchange, and I'm here to talk to you about how Jesus came to set the captives free and for you to be free. <clears throat> I want to share a story. I was working with a young client, and um, we were going to buy his first house, and like most people, I'm not going to even say young people, like most people, he had had an experience or the experience of getting into debt when he was younger. And so he's very afraid of credit. Now, there are two kinds of credit. There is consumer credit, which is a killer. And then there is investor credit or investor debt. So consumer debt, investor debt. So we were talking about... Um, you know, his big picture, what he hoped to accomplish for his family, and he has a young bride and children, and he wanted to take care of them the way God wanted him to. And he asked me about a very specific investment, and I said, well, why not? And he basically admitted, well, I'm afraid. And I said, what are you afraid of? Well, that changed his life, and in as little as I think it's been five months, he's worth uh, $250,000. So in a year, he's going to be worth a half a million dollars, which is awesome because he's the kind of guy that when you discover that he's, you know, and you want to do it too, all you have to do is say scooch over and show me how to do it. So let's ask a question today. Why are we not doing what God has called us to do for our marriages, for our family, for more importantly, for his kingdom? And it could start <clears throat> as close as your fork. Not to beat up on anybody. I know it's January. We've made some New Year's resolutions. But I want to talk to you about why we fail at anything. So, get your pencils, get your pens, get your um, notes on your phone, get your computer, and let's talk about the truth that sets the captives free. Jesus said to those who believed in him, right, they had full confidence, <clears throat> if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. And we just need to go to the red letters to find out what that is. And I challenge you, if you've not spent time reading and studying just the red letters, I encourage you to do so. Then he said, you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. That's John 8, 31 and 32. So who's not free? Captives aren't free. Are you free? I mean, we live in America. <clears throat> this is America. And we think about things like masks and restrictions and borders and, and, and. Well, I don't know about you, but I've had an opportunity to live in a third world country. The government is labeled differently. Um, but in my experience, I think the, <clears throat> the living style the lifestyle most accurately fits the description of fascist. So I've lived in a fascist country for almost a year <clears throat> as a woman. And it was extremely, extremely difficult. There can't be too many extremes in that. <clears throat> but I want to tell you that we in America don't know what captivity is. We don't see it. I see um, so many young people coming to America with nothing. And within one to two years, have everything. But I see Americans living in the same environment with the same and even better opportunities because they didn't have to learn a new language. They didn't have to learn new everything. And other people are able to come to America and become very successful 
because they see opportunities that we don't see. So let's talk today about everywhere you believe a lie, you are a captive. But there's hope. There's actually um, a psychological component or the way psychology describes this, and that's dissociative identity disorder, which means when you believe a lie and you are in captivity, you literally can break off or fragment a part of your soul that's going to continue to live in that lie or in that captivity. But the good news of Luke 4.18 is this. He, God, has sent me, Jesus, to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. This is why Jesus came. Yes, he came for us to have heaven as our home, but <clears throat> the earth is not groaning for the rapture. The earth is groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God in dominion, where we rule here from our heavenly position. So if you've ever had an opportunity to live in another country, I, as an American, took my American identity and my American citizenship to another country. Now, it didn't change that other government, but I could have. I could have overthrown it. Not in reality, but you see what I'm saying. But as a kingdom princess, I'm going to say, as a kingdom authority from God's throne room, I am supposed to be overthrowing all the works of the devil here. Now, not me. It's Christ. It's Holy Spirit in me who's supposed to be doing that. But when we believe a lie, we're captive ourselves and don't know it. I'll give you an example. <clears throat> I have a close family member who believes that you just got to deal with whatever ditch life threw you in. That's a region of captivity. And she can be delivered. But she has to replace the lie with the truth. The truth is what sets captivity captives free, right? So if you have any area of your life where you can say, I see a pattern of making decisions based on wrong beliefs or lies. You can even lie to yourself. In fact, I was reading in the Bible about six things God hates. No, seven. So if the Bible is God's inerrant, without error, word of God, wouldn't you think that that writer would have said there are seven things God hates? Because it looks like a typo right? But no, there are six things God hates. No, seven. So I thought, oh, I, I need to look at this more closely than just zooming through this. So when I looked at what it said, I read and I paid more careful attention at why the Bible was saying there are six things God hates. No, seven. And I saw lying twice. In that verse, which I might not have picked up on had I not paid more careful attention because that apparent typo made me want to look at what the mistake was, right? And we're kind of geared toward finding mistakes. But I asked the Lord, what does this mean? Lying and lying? Isn't that the same thing? And he said, no, there are two people you lie to. You lie to others and you lie to yourself. So if we are believing lies that we've either told ourselves, like I can never be financially free, um, I can never be happily married, I can never be healed, right? All these things that the Bible tells us we are, we just have to pull those things down on earth as it is in heaven. That's what Jesus said. Jesus taught us, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So I want to teach you the kingdom exchange. 
I'm so excited. One morning I woke up and the Lord just, I mean, I had awakened, but my eyes hadn't opened yet. You know that. You remember that from this morning. And right here beside me, the Lord said, come to me, ye who are weary and heavy laden. And in exchange, I'll give you rest. And my first thought was flying my eyeballs open. I have never read the Bible like that. He was so excited to remind me of that. This was not me just remembering that verse because I would have read it like, come to me, ye who are weary and heavy laden, and in exchange, I'll give you rest. But no, he was so excited that he just shouted with excitement, I will give you rest. And at that moment, I conceived the kingdom exchange. That's what we are to do. That's what we have dominion and authority to do. So any area of your life where you are believing a lie, I challenge you, ask yourself, sit down with the Lord. You know, if you search yourself, you can get in a lot of trouble. You can even get off track. And in fact, you can do very devastating things. You can make decisions outside your family and your own personal values, and you can destroy your life. But if you say, search me, O Lord, for any hidden thought, thoughts, faults, any hidden thoughts and any hidden faults and hurtful ways, God will reveal exactly what you need at that moment to deal with. Now, there might be, let's say you're praying that for somebody else. Oh, Lord, for my husband, for my wife, for my son, for my daughter. For my boss, if you're praying that for someone else, you might have your finger just touching that thing you want God to reveal. But what if that is not the most important thing that God thinks about that person right now? So if you have a husband and you've been nudging, you've been telling, you've been teaching, you've been expressing what your needs are, but they're still not being met. Okay, say it once. Say it twice, back off, and then take it to the Lord and leave it there, but pray daily. And the Lord may show you. So if you bring the Lord a list of four things you want changed in your husband, guess what's going to happen? You've got to let go of your agenda, or you are in lust. Not sexual lust, but you wanting to have your own way. But if you say, Lord, I want my husband or my wife or my sons or my daughters or my daughters-in-law, or my sons-in-law, or my grandchildren, great-grandchildren. I want them to walk in the fullness of everything you have for them. So please reveal to them areas of captivity and change that lie that they believe. Replace it with your truth. When you see that happen, everything will change. So let's keep going. We are to guard our heart with all Diligence for from, from our heart flows life. But if you see someone and yourself, so get before the Lord. Lord, what are the lies I'm believing? And write them down. Let him search your heart for the lies you are believing. So make a checklist. As a Christian, are we supposed to be healed? Mm -hmm. Are you not healed? Mm -hmm. Are you believing a lie about why you are not healed? Well, I didn't fast. Oh, that works. Are we supposed to fast 100%? But fasting changes my frequency so I can receive from heaven's frequency. Doritos have a frequency. Didn't come from the dirt. Other chemical things that we eat have a frequency, but my frequency is the kingdom of heaven. So I may need to temporarily get out anything that's not the frequency of God because that radio station from back in the day is going to have too much static I'm not going to hear. Fasting is to clarify your station so you can clearly hear. It gets the antenna ready to receive the message. Guarding your heart is do not let bad things in. What are you looking at with your eyes? Well, I like Game of Thrones. I haven't seen that, but I, I've seen like some little blurps of it that I don't want to expose myself to. Um, don't be entertained by sin. My personal 
opinion is, when I was teaching my children growing up, that if God has the top 10 things that we shouldn't be doing and to love him, if there are things in our Christian lives that we should not be participating in, we also should not be entertained by them. So we shouldn't be looking at them on the television, on the, on, at the movies, or listening to them on the radio. We shouldn't be entertained by sin. And we must, as Christians, die daily. We have to put on righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. And those things are not going to mix with some other things that we're putting in through our ears, through our eyes. Um, and Jesus said what goes in a man is not what makes him unclean, but what comes out. He meant, what are you putting off? What are you saying? What are you teaching? What are you revealing through your life? Let's reveal Christ. Let's die today to every agenda that is not the Father's. And he will call you into big, big things. He did me recently. It was where I just had to step out in faith and just go obey. Obedience is better than sacrifice. I could have sacrificed um, and done something different. But he said, no, I want you to have this. Go get it. And told me where to get it. And for me, it is a huge, huge stretch. And when I went to get it, we talked about it. We had been talking about it for four days. And when I went to get it, <clears throat> we continued to talk about it. And then the end of basically sign here, oh my goodness, we just found out we don't have it anymore. Oh yeah, bait and switch, right? That was my thought. I'm like, what's happening here? Because you've known. And, but in the end, I actually got top of the line everything for the same price. Because they didn't have the thing I went in to get, which was not. So I got this instead of this because that's what God wanted me to have. And you know what? I told the Lord, hey, um, I need this. If And I know that if you tell me what to get, you will pay for it. And immediately he said, and I went, whoa, that was not on my radar. <laughs> So I just obeyed. I want to just challenge you with the word that I heard last week. What God has told you to do, do it now. Not quickly. Now. What is now? So when I was telling my kids, um, clean your room now, that meant in the next second, get started. And complete it in a reasonable amount of time. But we're talking about getting set free from the captives. We have to die daily. We have to put blank on the altar. What are we needing to put on the altar today? Ask the Lord. Get with the Lord in your quiet time. And it's not just talking. The most important part of your quiet time is the listening. And God will tell you what to put on the altar. We long for the fruit, not just the promise. We have so many promises, but we have no fruit. And I mean the kinds that both should develop and be expressed in and through us and the kind that we eat or we partake of. But we want to see that guarding your heart is not letting the bad things in, not being entertained by sin. It is dying daily, putting blank on the altar. Like for me, I'm putting sugar on the altar. Mm. I remind myself when I want to go eat so-and-so, I'm like, okay, Lord, for you, for the purpose that you've called me, and for the specific thing that you have said to me, I am putting this cupcake on your altar. <laughs> Drink is to leave it there. You've got to leave that cupcake there. But when you really are committed, you're going to put that on the altar, and you're not going to go take that back from God's altar. And then you look for the fruit, not just the promise. So what is the fruit of if God has told you to weigh a certain weight? It's going to see that scale number coming down. Now, guarding your heart is not building walls. We build walls because we're afraid. We build walls because we're afraid that thing will happen again. We're building walls because we don't know how to surrender our hearts to the Lord. 
Guarding your heart is not believing lies. So ask the Lord again, where am I believing a lie? Guarding your heart is not allowing every emotion in. We have to feel emotions. I want to share briefly. The day, the morning, the minute, my late husband died. We had EMT on the scene. We had police fire medic. And finally they had to call it and they said we can do no more. I was praying in tongues. I was calling him back to life. The Lord had used me six months earlier to do that for another man. I was sure he was going to do this for my husband too. That was not his plan. My husband was dead. My father's children, my, my, my children's father was dead. I had to walk out the door and tell them out of my bedroom door. The moment I walked through that door, out of my room, into where the family was waiting, I was thinking, he will never see his grandchildren. And the Lord immediately corrected me and said, he has five babies on his lap right now. Those were our five children we had miscarried. In that moment, my thinking completely shifted from not here. I was looking at it from the wrong perspective, but from heaven's perspective. And I did not let that grief in. Did I grieve? Oh, yes, 100%. Grieving is a process. Grief is a lying spirit from the pit of hell that says your life is over. Or, you know, obviously their life is over. But that, because of that, this and this and this cannot happen for you. But we must not let lying emotions in. That's how you guard your heart. Now, grieving is scriptural. It is biblical. But grief, mm -mm, don't let it in. Guarding your heart is very important. Those who guard their thoughts have different actions. We guard our hearts in guarding our thoughts. And you have to check that thought. The Bible says take every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ. So if that thought is not obedient to Christ, pew, kill it. Pew, pew, as my granddaughter says, pew, pew. Instead, renew your mind. Have the mind of Christ. Jesus, what do you think about this? Now, if, for example, you have a relationship, it could be any relationship. It can even be somebody you work with and they're generally pleasant and then something happens and, boy, you see an ugly side for a moment and you might want to say to yourself, oh, that's who she really is. No, that's actually Satan talking to you. Everybody does have moments of weakness. I recently learned that what I was eating was literally inflaming my brain so much it affected my personality. And now that it's gone from my diet, my personality has completely changed. I don't mean completely because obviously the good things are still there. <clears throat> but I learned that um, the inflammation of the brain and then also a brain injury on top of that really changed who I was. And now I'm healed. So I want to challenge you today in our last couple of minutes. Why? Can fragments be whole? Jesus said, be one. He's telling me, he's telling you, be one. What does it mean to be one? It means you have no loose parts, right? If you have one car, <clears throat> it has all of its parts and all those parts come together and they all work right, well. Um, but you can have a part off and it's not going to work well. It's still one car, but Jesus is saying be without fragments so that you don't have areas of captivity that Satan is pulling your string on. Fragments can be 
replaced, to be made whole. But we want that done only through the Holy Spirit. And we ask the Lord to expose every area where we don't believe the truth. And we can look at what our promises are as Christians, as we walk in the power of God. If there's an area where, ah, my hip, ah, I'm hurting, I'm hurt. Wait a minute, that's supposed to be healed. Why isn't that healed? <clears throat> Mark Verkler has a great teaching on why aren't you healed? You've been believing for healing. You've been standing for it. So why aren't you healed? First of all, you're believing that pain. You're believing the symptom. You're believing the lie of Satan. But you might also <clears throat> not see because of unforgiveness. And I literally had a very severe hip injury to the point where in my middle 40s, the recommendation was becoming a hip replacement. I'm like, I'm, I'm in my middle 40s. That, who gets their hip replaced in the middle 40s? The Lord revealed to me through Mark Verkler that I was... I'm generally a forgiving person. I forgive immediately. But there was one thing that I was saying to myself, ooh, it was because of this person that I'm injured. And I didn't really see that that was unforgiveness, but I forgave. And it took three days of me telling my hip to be healed, commanding pain to go. <clears throat> On the third day, it was completely healed. No symptoms. And instead of like going through Walmart shopping just for groceries, and coming home and having to spend 24 hours or more packed with my hip packed in ice to endure. Couldn't walk, but just on the couch, literally packed in ice just to endure to complete healing in three days. Because I forgave. Because I got rid of that lie that was holding me captive that I couldn't see the truth in my body, the fruit of the truth of God for my life. But Jesus has come to set the captives free. So I challenge you today, and Lord, we pray, Father, we submit ourselves to you and say, search us, O Lord, for any hurtful thoughts, any wicked ways. Show us what you want to uncover today. Show us any lie that we have believed. Show us where we are walking in unforgiveness. And we surrender that, Lord. We surrender. And we say, no, we forgive. I forgive that person for what they did that caused me hurt. And I release them to you, Father, for you to love them back to the place where you've always called them to be established. Lord, set them back again into the pages of the book written of their life in your kingdom. And let us start over from there. Lord, we take anything that does not match up to what you have said at our, is ours, Lord. Any, <clears throat> any place, any area in need of healing, any area in need of restoration, any lack, any financial lack, Father. So I take any financial lack as an example. Father, and I submit that to your kingdom where lack does not exist. And as Jesus taught me, as Jesus taught us, I call down on earth as it is in heaven, fulfillment of that need from your kingdom, from your riches in glory. I call down into my bank account, into my family relationships into my business relationships. I call down healing into my body on earth as it is in heaven. Show me, Lord, how to walk in your way, how to lift Jesus up in all of his truth so that all men can be drawn to him, that my life is an example of your glory for your kingdom purposes. And that as I shine, shining with your glory, that I become a beacon for all men to come to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Guys, I bless you. I love to hear praise reports because our testimonies can help each other. Um, and I'm just so excited about what God has for you in this week. Have a great week, guys.
拜。